That's better. <clears throat> so uh, give me that uh, bass. No, I don't want it. That Fender. You just bought sounds, it. I know it sounds awesome. Your new Fender? Yeah. Nice. Sounds punchy and ballsy. No. In the past four years, how many bass amps you bought? Hold on. <laughs> well, no, I had the Jens <laughs> Benz, and that thing was awesome, but. It has I feel some like kind of every year you call me, you're like, yeah, man, I just got yeah, this, I just got this new one. one. <laughs> I traded this one for that one, and it's true. It is totally and true. you still haven't bought an Aguilar after all no, those years. No, I'm waiting for them to buy me one. I'm waiting for them to call me and say, oh, let, me turn, let me turn the volume down. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, we don't need that. But I'm waiting for them to send me a sponsorship. There you go. Aguilar Sponsor. NYC. That's right. Right here. I play all four strings. I'm talented. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm happy with I'm happy with what I got now. Nice. Hashtag Fender Rumble V3. Hashtag. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, we got any viewers? Yeah, we got Justin M. Siesta. Oh Justin M. Siesta's watching. Oh man. Oh boy. Now, I'm a little scared. Now we gotta turn it off. <laughs> Unless he's watching. I think it's uh, oh, oh Mike? Mike, your boy, Mike. Oh man, Mikey, Mike. There he is. Wow. Dennis Maida. Cool. Nice. That's it so far. Fran. Hi, Fran. Oh, I got a sponsor. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what you're gonna get me. Meatballs. I don't know what. What can you sponsor me with? But who <laughs> might that be? Nice. Just a sponsor? You could use a meatball sponsor. <laughs> I would love one turkey. Turkey meatballs. I, I, you know. Fran, but damn me. What? What? Oh, that, my mother's on? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It's our friend Fran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah. No, we already got it. If, if this my guy's on here, here, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This show is going to be. It's over now. It's, it's, it's over. Turn off yeah. the camera. When I saw the name, I said, oh, yeah. my. We're, we're Shut trouble. down the video. I work with Chris. You guys rock. Jeremy Adams. Very cool. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks, nice. Jeremy. He works with you? Maybe that. Oh, maybe Chris. Chris, uh, Chris Patrick, your, your, our, singer. Our, our singer. Your boy, Chris. Yeah. 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 Oh, boy. boy, too. You went boy, too. Don't be. <laughs> Thanks, don't be. Don't be. Hey, here's one from Chris Patrick. Hey, why aren't you guys at band practice? <laughs> oh, crap. Is that what I forgot. In the doghouse. Oh, man. It's weird. It's like watching us delayed. I feel like yeah. some kind of time warp here. The Twilight Zone. I'm starving, guys. What's for dinner? Oh, Mike. I'm starving, too, man. <laughs> That's... Mike comes here, plays bass for five minutes, and then we eat for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta get Anthony That's Franco. efficient use of your time. <laughs> we go everywhere. Mike's Mike's a Charlie sub subs guy. Oh right? really? Yeah. Where's there a Charlie yeah, sub? Where's that? the mall? Oh okay. Well, yeah. Okay. You know, okay. I think it's now it's grilled subs or whatever. Oh, or, or, you know, fancy, fancy, fancy. I haven't been in the mall things. in like, God, <laughs> maybe ten years. Want to get started? We can get started. We got we got a lot of people on here now. It's like we're blowing doing good. Up. We're blowing up the internet, folks. All Just right. like uh, Kim Kardashian. Yeah, there <laughs> exactly. it is. So Don't take anyway, off. hi everybody, and welcome to the uh, um, February edition of On the Meter with Mike and Brian. Uh, glad you guys could all make it, and we hope everybody's doing well. We're gonna try to do these shows once a month, right, Brian? Yes, once a month. Yeah, obviously uh, this month we're here in lovely uh, Pompton Plains, New Jersey. Portrait Studios with uh, a good friend of mine and Mike and the band, uh, Chris Padami. What's up, all? And we were just here a couple weeks ago, right, Chris? We were yeah. working on our uh, new single, Homebound, and uh, telling you you want to record music, this is the place you want to go. So Thanks. let's get started. Brian, you got the... Well, we're going to do... Uh, you want to do the tour Yeah, first? we're going to do the tour. All so right. Go ahead. I was going to say, if you could just show us around this room, what do you have here as far as gear and stuff like that? All right, well, yeah, here's, this is, uh, this is Studio B we're sitting in right now here, which is, uh, we got a ton of great stuff. I'll stand up and walk around. we got an audience console here, a bunch of great, great mic pre's, EQ's, Vintech, Focusrite, Rupert Neve Designs, SSL, 
Um, all Pro Tools HD. That's pretty much what we're running. Some manly stuff. Yeah. Now, one of the things I love about your studio is all your heads are in here, correct? Yes. So all and all the cabs are in a different room, right? Or you do? Yeah, we have it. We have it set up where you know all the guitars, the actual you know heads can sit in the control room. Cabinets are isolated in ISO booths, so that way you know any of the guitar players can hear what their sound is like actually coming through the monitors rather than listening to headphones. Um, a lot of guitar players prefer it that way, and it's it's really the best way to obviously hear what your sound is like on on tape. Um, so we have both Studio B as well as Studio A, which we'll get to upstairs. Um, we have it set up where you can sit in the, in the control room, plug into whatever head you want. Uh, we have a variety of different cabinets as well, mm -hmm. um, and the ISO booths, and, and hear what hear what it sounds like. Cool. Right, so, yeah, uh, right. Can we see maybe the vocal booth? Yeah, and... come on, we'll go. Let's go. We'll go through the the tour. We're going so. to the vocal booth. So Studio B is our uh, I call it mini mini A room. Um, this is just our vocal booth right here, with uh, also doubles up as a ISO booth for some some guitars and stuff. There's one of our U47 microphones in gold right there. No mics in Chris platinum. Was, you have no platinum mics in here. Chris was probably singing into that. Yes, he was. Yeah. I sang into that as well. You can see the control room from here. Yeah. Woo so that's our that's our one vocal booth down here. Our other ISOs are the uh, speakers here, speaker cabinets. Yep. Correct? Yep. There's one of our bass cabs, our David Eden cab. This is a Bad Cat cab. Um, for guitars that we use a lot. Um, I think it's cool how you have it set up because if, if you hear like a head that you like but you don't like the speaker, it's so easy for you to change it up and exactly. get a sound that somebody likes. So yep. it's, it's great. Yep. Especially for a picky bass player like myself. <laughs> Although I go with the Aguilar. Hashtag Aguilar. There you go. <laughs> He's looking for a sponsor. So the walk through the studio is actually an old barn from the 18th century, so we have some like real trees that, that are in here on the uh, on the basement level, which is the Studio B level. Portrait Studios. Hopefully, I got on there. It's our yeah, it's on there. Well, it's on backwards now because that's all right. Damn. It's for all the dyslexic, you know. That's yeah, true. Yeah. So, we'll you. <laughs> so Chris, when did you um? How long have you been here in this studio? We've been here in Pompton Plains now. It's going on nine years. It'll be nine years this July, actually. Um, so yeah, before that we were in Lincoln Park for about nine years, and I started the studio in my parents' garage in 1995. So yeah. now, what are these albums on the wall here? <laughs> what is this? And you don't have to go through all of them, but are these like bands you? Work with, which we'll get into later. But. Yeah, these are a variety of like classic records that I've done, I'll say, as well as some newer ones. Um, Not to put you on a spot, but it's kind of weird because there's no American Road stuff up <laughs> This is true. <laughs> Just have, so you're aware. We have not updated the wall in there's quite some a spot time. right that's, there. That's Looks the American like we got Road room. Okay. I mean, right. if the guys gave me a CD. Now, then. Facebook has seen that, so you can't go back. <laughs> we have a video. That's it. And now this is my favorite room. I don't mean to take over your floor. Oh, the kitchen? But the kitchen is, is really the hub of this. I mean, if you're going to like come record for a couple hours, it's nice to have a place to sit and eat. That's it. I mean, like I said, record for five minutes. You, you, got, got, co you, yeah, you got coffee, you got Justin Bieber plates. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're scattered. Everything, everything you could possibly want. Is scattered it. throughout the studio. Justin. Microwave, coffee mate. Uh, there used to be a Justin Bieber napkin over here. We have espresso up here. Oh, yeah. See? You know? Come on. If if only the best for that, people that record here. That's right. That's right. Do you know how to make espresso? Uh, yeah, if you give me one of those machines. <laughs> I used to just go to Starbucks. There we go. Well, there's a Starbucks right down the road, too. True. So beautifully. I'm located. more of a Dunkin' guy myself, but you know. We all have our crosses to bear. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, what you? So now we'll move up to. Well, actually, I didn't show. There is an ISO booth on this level. Oh, sweet. Is there really? Um, for, yes. That both Studio A and B. There's actually two. There's a more guitar. Sorry, we're kind of in the middle of a bunch of sessions now, so there's stuff all over the place in here. But I don't think I've ever we've ever used this room. No, yeah, we have here, not. This is uh, this is the A. This is Studio A's guitar. Oh, uh, it's in here. So. We got our Marshall. 412 Greenback Marshall cab. There's an Avatar cab here. Nice. Is that a, is that a 210 Avatar? That's a 212, actually. Excuse me. 
Yeah, this is uh, okay. another one of our ISO booths that's actually just got a bunch of more stuff like a, like a closet in here. <laughs> we got our, oh, our 610 Ampeg cab that, that you probably... Uh, I don't know if you've seen this one. Have you seen this one? No, I don't think you have. I had one of those. Heavy. It's going. It's heavy. The yeah, refrigerator, it's heavy. as it's called. It, it, yeah, going. it is. It's uh, yeah. the backbreaker, but it sounds great. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of boat for recording for sure, <laughs> but it sounds awesome. It does sound so, awesome. Classic. So, yeah, don't mind the. It's a little messy right now. But that's quite <laughs> so yeah, so that's so two ISO boots there. Um, yeah, the rest is just a hangout here. Some gold records, awards, all that fun stuff. Gold yeah. records. Um, Warped Tour 05. Yeah, 03 to 06. Man. Nice. Represent. There you go. So this place is legit. So. Yeah. <laughs> and now we'll move up to uh, our main live room, which is. Uh, the cool thing about the way we're set up here is both Studio A and B share the live room performance space. So here we have we have our grand piano in here. It's over in the uh, it's right corner here. Nice uh, six foot eleven Yamaha C6. Um, yeah, and this is you know our main main drum room. Uh, we, we actually record a bunch of different things in here from acoustic, acoustic guitars. We're actually just doing some real guitars in here. We got this the matchless Mac mic up over here. Um, another, once again, another cool thing about you guys, because not a lot of people do this, believe it or not, is the drums. And I know you play drums, so you know more than I would about drums. Um, but you guys have so many drums available for people that mm -hmm. the the wide assortment of sounds a drummer can get is 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 like heaven here, right? You could you go with a pearl snare if you want, or a Gretsch snare. I yeah, mean, I know. How many snares? I mean, oh man, alone here we have about oh geez, about ten snares. Um, yeah. So if you can't find a snare here that you like, you got problems. <laughs> bunch of different. Yeah, we got a, we got a variety of kits, like you said. Yeah. Um, so depending on the sound of. Uh, Depending on the sound you're looking for, we've uh, most likely got got a drum that'll, that'll work for. And you got my Fender bass over there. Thanks, thanks for keeping it nice. Fender Fender. For One thing I love about this room is that for as a drummer, is because of the high ceilings. Yeah, we got you get an amazing, and I'm talking about an amazing, fat, full, rich drum sound. I mean, this is a drummer's dream when you come to recording. I love the sound. Now you had somebody, um, obviously, no offense to you, but I, I don't think you did this, right? You didn't build this, but you thought of it, obviously, but... Yeah, no, actually, uh, yeah, we had, well, somewhat, I mean, my family, actually, uh, yeah, uh, cool. some of my, my uncles are, you know, contractors and stuff like that, so uh -huh. they, you know, did, uh, did the whole build out, but I, with, you know, a couple of my friends, um, you know, who were uh, like uh, acoustic architects and something yeah. that helped design the place for me. Um, we basically gave them, you know, an overall floor plan of what we had and how we wanted to lay it out. Um, and they pretty much checked over everything and, you know, figured out all the angles and also we don't have right angles and this and that. And, you know, to have the most, you know, the best sound possible. I mean, it is unbelievable, like in the corners and everything else, how everything was. Yeah, this out. room is especially cool because I don't know how well you see it on the video, but really to see like the different angles of the of the ceiling going up here and, and uh, yeah. you know, how going with the top, since we're at the top floor of the barn, how it, you know, how it curves in and everything. And um, we want to keep all the original wood beams as well as more trees and stuff like that that we, uh, that we have in here. Cool. So we're making sure everything was Yes, that's a tree. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, just hearing us talking here, the acoustics oh, yeah. are, are great. So yeah, yeah. And it was actually one of the things I was most nervous about because at the old studio I always loved the way the the room sounded and and um, and I can honestly say this room sounds better. So <laughs> which is which I was just a bonus moving moving on. So yeah, but uh, but yeah, all all acoustic instruments sound. I mean, any I, I won't even say just acoustic. I mean, any instrument sounds great. Yeah. In here, so. So, so moving on to the control room of Studio A over here. This is pretty much where I. It looks really. like you're in the middle of the session here. Yeah, it's a little like I said. We got we're doing some guitars, so there's a lot of guitars, oh, cases of is. junk laying around. No chicken farm sandwiches. <laughs> no, nah, no chicken farm sandwiches. I wish, you know. 
But this is this is unbelievable. This room is turn up our lights so everybody can see them off. So yeah, so this is uh, this is the flagship room, Studio A. Um, console is a Neve console, Amic, um, it's got all Neve, Mike Freezy cues, full automation, recall. Um, one of the it's one of the actual last consoles that Rupert Neve designed for Amic. Um, so it's real special. We've got you know a lot of custom modifications to it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a gorgeous sounding, gorgeous sounding desk. So, and that's our flagship. So we have pretty, whereas downstairs we just have Pro Tools, Pro Tools HD. We have Pro Tools HD up here, but we still have the old school analog, which I'll never get rid of. The yeah. uh, 24 track, two inch tape machine over here. That's awesome. And you got this beauty. and uh, half inch analog inch. tape machine yeah. over here. So I actually recorded on one of these a long time ago. Yeah, so I think they destroyed the tape though. It's bad. <laughs> bad, bad tape. I mean, up until 2005, I would say that you know these machines were we used. I used every day. I mean, a lot of the records you know um, that I made were were all analog, pretty much up until that that time. Um, yeah. And then we pretty much made the full switch on over to Pro Tools HD. Yeah. Um, and that was a large reason of it was because tape became really expensive because the company Quantigy stopped making mm. tape here in the U.S. and um, that basically changed it changed it all for a lot of guys like myself and studios. Now is it easier? I don't think it's I don't know if it's easier, but obviously it's different going right to to digital, I guess. I mean, for us and for how I work, I mean, it's it's basically the same. I, mean, I use. I use Pro Tools just like I used an analog tape machine. I mean, and that's pretty much one of the things that's special about coming here is we, whether you're recording here in Studio A or, or Studio B downstairs, basically we're still using, you know, a console, an analog console. We still have analog outboard gear. Um, we're returning, you know, we're not just doing everything in the box, as they say. We're not mixing in the box. We're, you know, we're taking each track out to all the individual channels of the console. So, you know, this is the bass drum, this is the snare drum, you know guitar or space, whatever, you know, as it goes down, we're actually mixing still on the console while using all the technology of Pro Tools as well for editing and, mm -hmm. you know, you know, and we have, when we do some plugins as well, some really killer plugins that are out there today. So we're, it's a, it's a pretty hybrid setup, but the principles of, you know, the, the true principles of recording and how we record it to analog tape, we do the exact same way, basically down to digital, um, except instead of going to tape it's going through an analog to digital converter and right, you know right, exactly. onto a hard drive exactly. so but uh but yeah i mean sound wise you know we've got some great and you know a to d converters here so up here we have all antelope um orion antelope 10 and clocking and, and stuff so this is uh pro tools hdx so we just actually updated the system up here um i updated it about a year and a half ago mm -hmm. and so it's uh pretty stellar sounding so nice. yeah, for for recording and we do some you know mastering in here too as well. So cool. Um, yeah. So that's cool. So there's a little vocal booth over vocal here booth. too that we have. Want to see that? Show you I think there's a tree in there as well. Of course. So. <laughs> Oh, look at this. The tree's in there. That must get some good acoustics, that tree. That's it. That, that's really the, the the trick was working around that tree. Yeah, so. ever any birds fly out there or anything? But I see there's holes in there. Yeah, they, I, at Nothing. one time. That's one the woodpecker. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So, yeah. Very cool. We can sit, sit here and yeah, we'll definitely see you here and we'll uh, we have a couple questions for you if that's okay. Of course. Check the microphone with the stand is set up. Oh, speaking of high, you know, class technology, yeah. we've, got the, we've got the zip drive. Out. Zip look drive, at look at that, that huh? <laughs> oh, what, what are those? Man, let's say hi, uh, Sydney. How you doing? Watching and Fran, you're still there. And Teresa, good to see you. Or not see you, but glad you're. Uh, <laughs> well, they see us. So. Yes, that's true. That's glad true. you're hanging out. Glad that's you're hanging out. So, I, I, one of the questions I want to ask you is: I, I, you've had a ton of bands in here, all kinds of stuff going on. 
What was the absolutely most crazy thing that happened during a recording session? They can say without, you know, <laughs> you don't have to say name names if you don't want to, but. Yeah. Oh man, oh geez, that's a, that's a tough one. I mean, there's been a lot of crazy, a lot of crazy sessions, but I think, well, in terms of coordinating a session, um, last year, actually, um, I did a, uh, a track for Janina Gavankar, um, who is, um, she's an actress, she's on the show, um, Mysteries of Laura, she was on, um, True Blood, uh, okay. now she's in Sleepy Hollow, um, but she did a track, it was actually, um, a, a, a remix, kind of, of, um, that Martin Garrix, um, song don't look down and uh she rearranged it was rearranged with a, a whole drum corps in as the main you know instruments of the song so it was with the jersey new jersey surf drum corps oh, wow. and um wow. and that was probably one of the craziest sessions in terms of the amount of people that were here and just the moment that room. well we did yeah I mean, well it was we did it like by section basically and it was you know of course, it was like it was right around this time of year. Actually, it was in February, and um, we, uh, you know, it was, of course, it had snowed the night before. So it was one of those where, like, I woke up at like three in the morning to like clear out like the parking lot, <laughs> driveway, all that stuff, and you know, they came in around like seven a.m. to start. You know, we and we worked. I mean, it was it was basically a full full from like seven a. You know, from like I was up from basically three a.m. till. Like four or five a.m. the next day, wow. <laughs> and uh, just to get you know we did all the drum all the drum stuff you know the battery percussion all that and then the um, you know the variety of horns that are in the drum corps and uh, we did it each by section and and uh, it, I mean it came out it came out amazing but it just the coordination of just getting you know everybody <laughs> in and out and and um, with the snow and this and that you know and and there, that was so that was uh, one of the you know. It was a super fun session, but one of the, in terms of just coordination of everything, was, was sounds, crazy. Sounds like it was pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah, that was one of the bigger, cool. bigger ones. So I know you talked a little bit, but um, could you give us a little history on you know your studio and maybe why you got into recording bands and stuff like that? Sure. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I was in bands growing up, obviously. Uh, you know, yeah. we, we've known each other a while. Yeah. So um, I started the studio in my parents' garage. Just originally, it was just a studio for myself and, you know, my band to just kind of jam and, you know, just record some demos and stuff. You know, I, I honestly, I say this all the time, I never had the intention of actually opening my own studio. I kind of just went that way. You know, I was always like, oh, okay, I'm going to, you know, go get a job at you know another studio and i'll just work there you know that's that'll be the goal you know and um it started out where you know i i i you know built a couple rooms my parents basically gave me their garage to build some rooms in nice which was them. awesome and i'm incredibly thankful for, <laughs> for that um and so i started out with just a couple of rooms and we would rehearse in there and then you know, we have friends bands that we met playing out and stuff, and they, you know, couldn't afford to go to, you know, the, uh, a good studio or anything, you know, bigger studio or whatever. So I said, oh, yeah, come on over to, come on over to my house, you know, yeah. and, and <laughs> it just started that way with, for, you know, like little to no money, you know, back then. And then it turns, you know, just word of mouth started, you know, it was like, oh. Hey, you know, we'll go, you should go call this guy Chris. You know, like he's got a, a cool place in his parents' <laughs> garage. Not really, uh, my, my doing. It's oh, true. Yeah, it's always Brian. It's true. You know it is. He's really responsible for everything. <laughs> well, I remember uh, <laughs> we had recorded in your garage. You were definitely one of the first. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, think, I think we're the definitely. second or third one to record there, and it was just the garage. And then maybe like six months later, and we recorded like 15 songs in like two hours. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then, which the is the true like, way of making right yeah, exactly. in 1988. Yeah. No, yeah, it was like, uh, like 688. I had, I had an eight track <coughs> cassette eight -track. recorder. I remember going then. home with a cassette. Yeah, and then the next time I came to your house, which was like maybe three or four months later. Um, you had all these walls up. Yeah. That was like my graduation graduation present, you know, for my parents. Like, like, <laughs> they let like you build walls or they, they put the walls they Well, they helped me build the walls. That's you know, right. and oh, stuff. that's awesome. And, and that's cool. very cool. And so, uh, yeah, it was, th that's, that's where it all started, you know. And then I, I went to school for it. I did go to, um, I started out at, at County College of Morris, and I got my associate's degree there in music recording, and then transferred from there to NYU. Um, where I got my bachelor's in music technology and percussion, and um, 
all throughout that whole time of being in college, I was just working, you know, like still playing in, you know, obviously playing in bands, working in, you know, the garage and everything. And, and I got, you know, some internships at some other studios. I actually got hired at another studio and I, I worked there, you know, kind of in college as, as well. Um, and it was, it was, uh, you know, I, I, it just, it just kind of just all started happening where I started really doing a lot, a lot more work for, um, you know, I was, I was big into obviously the punk rock scene here in, in New Jersey at the time and, and, uh, started recording a bunch of, you know, at the time ska bands turned into pop punk bands, turned into, you know, hardcore bands, metal bands, emo bands, <laughs> you know, all the different tries as it all went through. Um, and it just all word of mouth. Like it was just really amazing, you know. Like it was. I, I. Everybody always asks, "Oh, did you advertise? Did you do any?" And I said, you know, my best advertisement was just getting at that time people getting a CD and seeing, you know, where it was recorded and yeah. you know produced by Chris Benami on the back or whatever. And and that's uh, you know. So it started. It started there and just word of mouth. I started getting more and more bands and then like independent record labels and and then I I graduated college and I said, you know what, I'm just going to go for it and do it. And then I. Got a building in Lincoln Park cool. and rented that out for a while and um, kind of just took the plunge. Like, I, I got to do it, you know, because everybody always wanted better quality, better like that back then. That's what, you know, you want to you want to go, oh, I want to go to a studio or a live room. People would be like, oh, hey, man, you want to go record us at this studio because they got a cool live room? And I was like, all right, yeah, I'll do that. But, you know, then it turned out to be more cost effective. Well, yeah. I'll just, I mean, this room, I'll get a place for the live room. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll take the plunge. And I mean, this room <laughs> you have here is really sick. The other room um, at the other place, excellent as well. Yeah. I mean, it was great sounding. I mean, we, one of my bands, I think, recorded there live, all live. Visit great, right? Visit right, great. Yeah, yeah. recorded the whole thing there. And it just sounded so great. Um, you know, so once again, if this is a, definitely a place you want to come to. You want to do, you know, the standard step recordings, you know, or um, live, right? You can do live recordings. Yeah, live. we could do it all pretty much. Yep. Yeah. We're even doing video stuff now, live videos if people want to do in, in the in the room and everything. Yeah. So, so that that's a good segue to what I was going to ask you next, which was, um, what kind of services you provide? Do you obviously you do recording here, live bands mm -hmm. and, and other things, but you also you just mentioned videos. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, talk a little bit about that. And, and yeah, we do. Basically, we do basically everything here. I mean, from you know songwriting, production, recording, um, mixing, mastering, um, and now we're you know even doing live video, live video stuff. Um, you know, performance videos that you know for for YouTube and everything for artists. Um, so really, we can do you know we have artists that come in that you know, are both obviously signed to record labels as well as unsigned. So, you know, we, we treat everyone the same here, whether you have a record deal or don't have a record deal. Um, and, you know, you could come in and have an idea for a song. You know, we, we've worked with many people who, you know, maybe have a melody or, you know, lyrics and, you know, need music and, you know, we'll write, you know, write with them, you know, and fully, you know, produce out a track that way. And then obviously there's the bands that come in who will, you know, produce songs for, you know, they can come in and really spend some time, go track by track, so, you know, and we could do some pre-production and then, you know, move into, you know, really get diving into the song arrangements and stuff like that. Or we can just, you know, go in and do live recordings as well. Wow. Full service. <laughs> yeah, full service all the way. Um, and now with our video, we, you know, we're partnered up with a couple of different videographers who um, do really amazing work. and. And, uh, you know, we could get some really nice, you know, performance videos. We actually just put up on our website, you know, a few different videos that we, that have been done here in the live room that everybody could check out. Um, yeah, just, just trying to meet all the needs of, you know, the artists today. That's what we're, you know, that's, that's what we're doing. So pretty much runs the whole, <laughs> yeah, 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 the whole pandemic pretty much. Yeah. You guys don't do <laughs> cartoons or anything. Yeah, like no, you know, that's soon, like that. soon enough. I do yeah, know an okay, animation guy. So. Big shout out to Sue and Lisa and Dawn. Thank you for uh, tuning in today. Thanks. Fran, Sharon, thank you for uh, listening. And Is Justin still on? He bailed out. Uh, I think he bailed out. <laughs> yeah, he's out already. Yeah. Out hey. already. <laughs> if anybody has any questions online that they want to ask us, say, you know, type it up you know, on Facebook Live and we'll ask Chris you know, your question if you have any questions about you know, music, you know, recordings, whatever it may be. Um, Getting back to bands, when, when, when they're getting ready to come into the studio, 
what what are some of the things they should do to prepare to to be ready to record? Because you don't want to just show up at a studio and say, "Here we go." Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, preparation is key in in you know any recording situation. Whether you're going to come in to do an album or a single or come in to do a live thing. I mean, you know, it, preparation is everything. We always stress that. I mean, I think the 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 first and foremost thing is in terms of. Um, you know, just just knowing, you know, obviously knowing the track, you know, how, you know, like your overall goal for sound, what, what you guys are going for, you know, so we can, you know, kind of hit that with, you know, how we're going to mic things and how we're going to, you know, choose maybe, you know, what amps we're going to choose, things like that. Um, but, you know, drummers play to a click track, you know, is, is always the first thing, you know, practice up with a click. I mean, nine times out of ten, we're, we're going to record to a click. I mean, we have... The way everybody does it, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, drummers out there, that <laughs> is extremely important. You want a really tight sound, and, what, and with Pro Tools and stuff, there's a lot of cool things they can do. But if you're not playing to a click track and everything is nice and in time, it, it's it, it's going to be a train wreck. Again. Yeah. So yeah, so that's that. that's definitely a big one. You know, um, is uh, you know drummers, you know. Play, you know, playing the clicks, you know, practicing with the clicks, you know, even in band practice and stuff, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot that, that will, will, will go much smoother <laughs> being prepared that way. Um, in terms of, you know, if you're going to bring, like, obviously we have a bunch of guitars, we have drums, we have all these great amps, but if you are going to bring in any of your own gear, guitars, make sure they're set up. Um, intonated, you know, that's that's incredibly important. We don't want to sit, you know, the whole session trying to get a guitar in tune, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's happened more than enough times. You know, drummers want to use their own drums, that's fine too. Um, but make sure they're reheaded, you know, we'll give you recommendations for heads we like for recording. Um, and that's always really important. You know, we want to get the best sound possible, you know. So, I mean, being having the instruments prepped as well is, is, is incredibly important. So um, lyric sheets are always a good thing. Sometimes people, you know, give us, you know, chords with, with uh, lyrics and everything like that's on this, this page here, which is always really, uh, really good too. Sometimes, you know, if we're doing vocals, if we're, you know, doing uh, punches and, you know, or comps rather with different takes, you know, we can mark up the uh, lyric sheets and stuff. That's always a good thing. So th those are all like the, the main, I'd say the main things to really get in a good, you know, I think what's great you know, about you mentioning the, the lyric sheets and stuff is you're a musician yourself. I mean, you're an amazing drummer, I'll just say that. Um, <laughs> piano, you could use a little bit of work. Ah, yeah. But no, you're a great <laughs> arranger. You're a great arranger. You are. You had a great ear. You got a great personality, all that stuff. Um, but it helps that you know music like what what, yeah. what a g minor seven sounds like yeah yeah because i mean it, it, you can hear the tonal differences or if something's out of tune um and that helps the process a lot easier yeah right if yeah you absolutely if, if you're not a musician then and it, it sounds normal you know yeah, but, um, yeah. you got a good ear for that stuff so i mean that's one of the things I, I do pride myself on both myself and um, you know, everybody who works here, you know, we all are musicians, so it's, uh, and I think that's incredibly important to the, to the whole process, you know. So we actually have a question on here. Um, we already went over your, your most memor memor ah, memorable, <laughs> memorable <laughs> recording was with the, the big band, but do you like working uh, with the analog um, systems that you have? Your or digital or digital, which you prefer? Uh, I mean, I you know I like them both for different different reasons. I would say. I mean, I obviously I, I learned on analog, so I'm you know I I appreciate the the analog sound, and I, I appreciate that the imperfections of analog. I, I guess I, I should say you know um, I think one of the one of the things that um, I personally, as a as a producer, always try and capture. It's just you know, I want I want to capture the sound of the band. I want it to be, you know, yeah, we want it to be a polished, great sound and recording as best as possible. But we don't want it to be fake. You know, we want it to be as real as possible. You know, it's like for me, it's like there's nothing better than going to see a band live and hearing how great they sound live, and then to capture that energy down to tape. So. I, I I try and I, no matter whether I'm recording analog or whether I'm recording digitally. It's the same same mindset, 
same process, you know, same mics, same, you know, yeah. pretty much the same, the same deal. Um, I love in digital how we can, you know, do multiple takes of things and it's just easy to go right from take one to take two, you know, flip through playlists and, you know, do some quick editing and we got a track, you know, whereas like we're with analog, we're cutting tape with a razor blade and all that, <laughs> you know, hoping not wow. to screw up and what takes, you know, an edit that, you know, can take, you know, two seconds on Pro Tools would take 20 minutes on, uh, you know, analog tape. So that I, I do not miss right, right. <laughs> at all, but, um, but appreciate it, you know. Um, well, you went through it. That's Yeah, know, I mean, that was like my first job. Which, is, I, you which know, is good because if anything yeah. fails, you know, you're okay because you know yeah. how to operate. I mean, if we can find some tape for you. Yeah. Well, you can still buy that's another yeah, episode. We, we can buy tape. That's yeah, for sure. Uh, big but, shout out to Amy. Hey, Thanks Amy. for listening in and watching. Yeah. And Maria. So, what? Uh, just name some artists that you work with that maybe you know people out here have heard of. Cool. And yeah. Some upcoming um, ones that you think that people should be listening to. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, some ones that I, I've worked with. Uh, I've worked with. Um, see, in terms of a lot of the, the punk rock, you know, genre stuff. I mean, the early November, the starting line. Um, I used to do a ton of work for Drive Through Records when they were still around as a label. Um, so a lot, a lot of those bands. Um, yeah, recently, you know, Janina Gavankar. Um, man, I always, you know, everybody was asking me these things, and I'm just like, uh, <laughs> was, I've been only doing this 22 years, and I can't remember half of the 22 was, years of experiences <laughs> in there. Uh, you had one of my in there. You had one of my. Didn't you have one of my favorite singers of all time here? Who's that? <laughs> not that person. <laughs> not that person. We're not gonna name him. Inside joke, folks. <laughs> Did you have somebody from a like a famous? Oh yes, yeah. so I mean Mike group? Mike Patton from Faith No More. Yeah, yeah I did. And, and thank you for calling me, letting me know. I'm you know, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, that was an amazing record. Yeah, I did a lot of work with the Dillinger Escape Plan too, and I did their record Irony's a Dead Scene, which had Mike Patton as the vocalist on it, and that was that was probably one of the most memorable experiences oh, yeah. for me too, because I was. And still am a huge Faith No More fan, okay. and um, Mr. Bungle and all you know, ton of Mike's projects, and working with getting to work with him on a record was uh, was a very really cool, really cool experience. Yeah, so that was yeah, that was that was awesome. Any up and com coming artists? Up and coming we artists. Paying, we yeah. should be paying attention. I to think American them. Road is maybe one of them to check out here. We'll, we'll pay him later. <laughs> um, yeah, there's there's a lot a uh, lot of really great uh, you know awesome independent artists. I've, had it in here and um lauren marsh is one of them she's a great great singer songwriter um uh leanne weiss october rose her new project very cool um i just did a record for uh this guy rob jennings who's another singer songwriter who's uh, actually local here a uh, good friend good friend of mine's brother he's a really cool record that we made this summer um, there's a band from Pittsburgh called Eternal Boy that I just did a record for. It was an awesome pop punk band. I love those that. guys. I heard that, um, yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, so those are some of the most more more recent things that have Very that, nice. that have been happening. You know, I mean, there's. I mean, I love everything I work on, so I, I'm not trying to just single out like, oh, yeah. you know, check the, you know, yeah. no, 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 you got to no. check out everybody. But yeah. Um, but yeah, those are some of the cool things that that uh, you know have been just recently happening. That's That's cool. Cool. Uh, big shout out to our um, friend Patrick Pat. Pat, how Ready you doing? Slide for us, yeah. Mr. Lap yeah, Steel himself. Oh, sounds so good. You, you can see him in uh, the, the, the Country Comfort folks in that's uh, right, that's right. Their video, yeah, that's one of the videos saw. that was done here. That yeah. looked great. Yeah, looked good man. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> who who uh, recorded that? Who was the uh, person that did the? Mike Ebold was the uh, videographer. He did a great job. Yeah, yeah it, looks, it, it looks job. great. Sounds great too. And yeah, Mary, was, yeah, big shout out to Mary. Sorry. Hey, yeah, Mary's all right. All right. Uh, that's all those questions. Yep. The questions we have for you for now. So now we're going to turn to our favorite, one of our favorite segments of the show, and it's album spotlight. And today we picked an album which I think Chris is a pretty big fan of. We were talking about it in the car, and we were already arguing. <laughs> we didn't like. I don't even think we made it. I, Five he, minutes from my house. Like, he lives like two blocks from me. We didn't even pass my house to get here. You know, his house is my house. Yeah, your yeah, house. Yeah. So maybe five minutes and already we were arguing yeah, about it. Like, let's just save it for the yeah, segment. So, so the album spotlight for this month is 
2112 by Rush. <laughs> One of my favorites. I think that was a great album. It's called a concept album, even though really it's not because it has, you know, like 20 some odd minutes of, you know, one long song with different segments that are all tied together, which is basically about an alien war and high priests and all kinds of other stuff. It's, it's, it's really awesome. And then the, uh, the rest of the album are just some unre like four unrelated songs that really don't have much to do with yeah. with the concept of it. So some people debate whether it really truly is a concept album. I will call it one. And it's an album that the record label did not want them to record, but yeah. they did it anyway, which I think that's cool. Absolutely. I don't think you can get away with that today, but back then <laughs> you definitely... That, that, to do that was amazing. And it's really the record that, to me, defined Rush. Like, I mean, like, that was like... I mean, the, like that's what I heard that record, and I was like hooked on hooked on Rush oh, at, at, that, at that point. You know, to me, I mean, not to be like the rain. There's the rain, the rain cloud. It's Come not in. a full concept album. It's one side. It's a little lazy to me. Lazy. Yes. Oh, lazy. What? God, I got one side. Twenty minutes. Let's cash in. We got some singles we're gonna throw on the other side because oh. we don't have enough room. Oh, oh man. And, I mean, compared to the other albums, it's like, eh, number four, maybe five. Moving picture. Four, four, five, four, five four, out of four, five. Out of yes. Five yes. You gotta be yes. Kidding. Yes. And what we talk about goblins and aliens. Oh. What would could you possibly rate higher than twenty one twelve? Moving oh. pictures. That's, uh, okay, that that's was more commercial. commercial yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, in defense of you know my what I like, I like the more commercial sounding Rush stuff. I mean, I love movies. I have a yeah, short dude, right now, man, don't get us I go and listen to one song that goes for fifteen minutes. My first call yeah, was that, called the Red Barchetta. Okay, oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Great song. Great song. So a live in Rio version of that song. Awesome. Yeah, really cool. I mean, Rush is one of my all-time favorite. I mean, as a drummer, you you I, I feel yeah, like how you, could you not? You can't not love yes. Rush. But I mean, going back to what Mike said, how they you know the record label did not want, yes. and nobody got that record. Yeah. But the fans like went nuts for it. I Absolutely. mean, and that was like really the record that defined them. I think if they did launch their careers, really, I've mean, never yeah. really pushed them over the top. Yep. Yeah. And uh, in terms of the you know, I mean, the concept thing, well. I know you, you think it's a little weak, but right. I mean, in terms of okay, forget the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Musically, it is ridiculous. Oh, I'll, I'll give you that. I mean, every album I mean, they do is amazing. And yeah, I mean, but for that time, I mean, what year was that? Now seventy six. Six. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, uh, to me, it sounds a little dated. I mean, now, well, yes, 40 well, more years, years ago. Yes, compared to the other stuff. <laughs> I can listen to the other albums before that and after that sound. So, wait, are you still talking about moving pictures or are you talking like like Test for Echo now? Yeah, like, no, I'm just I talking mean, about the general. The keyboard in the beginning, I'm like, who? I, I could have done that with like my toes on the. You know, oh, come on. Oh, man. Just, yeah, I don't know. Come oh, on. Get out of here. There's yeah, some parts that are brilliant. Can't mock the moog stuff. That's all yeah, that's, that's no, right. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> the song about crying, I, it made me want to go to sleep. You know, I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. As, as far as Rush albums go. I understand Rush is a love-hate band for yeah, many that people. that is true. And, and that's, you know, me, you know, like I just... Obviously, like music, I I don't think that I even paid attention to Getty's voice as much when I first started listening to Rush. And everybody's that's always the argument I hear first is, oh man, I can't stand that guy's voice, you know, whatever. I've actually grown to love Getty's voice. I love voice. his voice. You know, I, always, I always thought it was unique. So yeah, I, I like exactly. It, so. Not to mention that he's a ripping bass player yes. too. And I mean, he's like, playing the the pedals yeah. at the same time, and he's singing at the same time, yeah. which that. I mean, talk crazy. about like now. There's a band that I can honestly say like I mean I and I love Rush, but. I like seeing them live even more than listening to them recorded. Because like, oh, the first time yeah. I saw Rush live was like, a, I guess it was 91 on the Roll, Roll the Bones tour. And I was like, oh my God. Like, there's three dudes on stage. Yeah. Like, Neil's triggering different things. Alex and Eddie are playing. That was playing Box? guitar show. Yeah, that was Counterparts. Nice. That, that was a great oh, show. Okay. I saw, that's that's where I saw you. Yeah. We, were like a row, awesome. we didn't even know each other was going. Yeah. I think you were a row away from me. Yeah. But, <laughs> Counterparts tour was great. Yeah. That was my. That was one of yeah. my favorites. But I've seen him on every tour I think, nice. like since Roll the Bones. But I, actually, I missed the last tour, which like kind of sucks because oh, that's like their that's kind of pretty much their it, last yeah. tour. Yeah, you know, which, which yeah. tour and was then, your favorite? I mean, you, if you've seen oh, all these man. tours, you got I go. think Counterparts tour was definitely one of my favorites of theirs. Um, the R, what was it the R R thirty tour? Was that that was one of them too? Uh, that that was a really great tour, I thought. Um, 
the one where they did moving pictures, like uh, all the, you know, w which was really cool. Like they did all the moving pictures. But I think then they came out of the encore and did all the 20 as well. You know, like, which is like, like okay. Right. Yeah, like, I'm fine. Check, please. <laughs> Somebody give me a hot towel. Yeah. 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 But uh, now 2112 to me, man, is, is just the record that, like, I mean, that, that just set the standard for Rush records from there on out. So is that oh, your record. favorite Rush record then? That is. That is definitely, my, I think, my 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 top. I would say I, I teeter a lot because I, I there's a lot of like that old rush that I like. Like I love Twenty One Twelve. I love Moving Pictures. All the way you up know. the stage. Yeah, I love um, uh, Grace Under Pressure. You know, a Counterparts is actually which they never talk. They it's like it's like they, they, they forget about that record. Yeah, I don't think yeah. they like it. So I love Counterparts. Yeah. I love that record. You know, I mean, I I like a lot on Test for Echo too. You know, like some of the newer stuff. I think it's cool. It's just you know they kind of just have gone in a little different. Yeah, they've gone away from kind of more of the progressive stuff. You know, like which is always what I love. You mm -hmm. know about Rush, but I mean, man, hold your fires, great. I mean, there's like there's like can go not on. a bad Rush album. The next man's opinion. I can go on and on about different Rush records, mm -hmm. I mean, or even just songs. Like yeah, subdivisions, man. Come on, song rule. That's a great song. That's a great, a great song. song. I mean. What else yeah, would you say? I'm waiting for him to say that's a little weak too because of the keyboards or something. <laughs> you know? I like the key. Listen, I like the keyboard and he's a great keyboard player. I just, the beginning of that, I kind of felt like, you know, I was in like, you know, basic. Space? Yeah, I not, even, even, not even space. I think not even <laughs> space. Not even space. I felt like it was kind of like, oops, I stepped on the keyboard. My Moog. I stepped on my Moog. I'm just going to leave it in there because, you know, we're in Moog. Well, you know, that, 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 that the Moog. Those keyboards it's didn't. Keyboard. I think it's, I, I don't know. I think he says Moog, actually, is, is how. Oh, is it Bob Moog or whatever? Okay. 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 So, anyway, yeah. that's, that's, a, a, that's a another great debate. Right. But. <laughs> <laughs> tomato, tomato. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> but then you know, keyboards only did so much back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I, know. I mean, those are ah well. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, I get it. I, I get it. I know that's your. I knew that was one of your more of your uh, one of your more favorite. Control. Come on, man. The <laughs> drumming is <laughs> listen. <laughs> the drumming is outstanding throughout. The guitar work. I just really, the man. lyrics to me. As compared to the other albums, because that's what I do, I, I'll compare albums to albums. Yeah. Um, to me, the lyrics are a little bit on the... I will like, say, where are we I, going? Think, I think Neil's lyrics got better over the years. I would totally agree. I, will say I it. totally agree. I will say And that. was that the first album that he wrote all the lyrics to? Was that the first one? 2012? I no, I think it was Farewell the Kings was before that. Where he wrote yeah, all he the lyrics? The Kings, yeah, yeah, that was the first one? All, yeah. all himself. Yeah, well, so uh, he, he probably yeah. I don't know. Okay. I'm a Rush fan, but I don't actually know the answer to that. Oh. So, I think it but, might be fair. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. We agree to disagree. Does anybody on the uh, internet have any comments on that? Just I had somebody saying Rush. <laughs> that was uh, your our boy. Oh, he's back. Man. He's back. He's he must back. have had a sandwich or something. Yeah. You know, he had to go to the saying. bathroom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. <laughs> That's hilarious. Because <laughs> it's true. All right. I love right. set on that one. Love him. Yeah, I love him too. That's it. Everybody's like, why the hell are you all talking about Rush? Uh, <laughs> that's true. Don't you guys play country? Yeah, right. Why are we trying to? <laughs> yeah, you know, we discussed that, but we're, you know, we're rock guys, just like, like, just like you know, you listen yeah. to everything. We listen sure. to everything. I listen. And, you know, and if you want to be a better musician, you young musicians out there, if you're watching, yes. you want to listen to everything. You want to learn. Country, you want to learn rock, you want to learn some Motown, you want to R&B, a little bit of everything. Because gotcha. you know what? It makes you a better musician. So true. definitely true. you want to try to listen to everything. Absolutely. So, so Don't pigeonhole yourselves. So uh, that's it for our... Um, I appreciate you. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having us. Thank you guys. This was awesome. Cool. And thank everybody out there for tuning in. We really appreciate it. We'll be back next month yep. uh, around the same time. Around I don't know the same my time. time. Yeah, the, the, towards the end of... March, and we'll be letting you know via Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff who our special guests will be. But right now, we're keeping it secret because we're still working on it. But, and yeah. if you want us to review one of your favorite albums, please uh, yeah. DM us, Twitter us, Instagram us. You know, you know how to get a hold of us and, and uh, let us know, and we'll be glad to discuss it. Absolutely. You and may if, not like what we have to say, though. <laughs> and if you have any questions, make sure it's a rush record. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> And any questions you guys have about anything, send them to us and uh, or any ideas you may have, and maybe we'll uh, feature it on the next show. So, again, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. 
Thanks guys. so much, Chris, for having us and being a part Thank of the show. And we'll see you guys all next month. Portrait Thank Recording you. Studios. Portrait, com. That's right. <laughs> Play it back. No, give it, give it. Portrait Recording Studios dot com. Check us out. Please do. These guys are great. You, you love the product once it's done. We're, we've had nothing but wonderful experience here. So Thank you, guys. Speak yeah. for yourself. Well, that's because you got your head stuck in the door, but that's a nice story. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next month. Bye. Bye.